affects what part of your nervous system gets stimulated. That if you breathe thoracically, i.e. with your chest, then you uh, the breathing is shorter. It's more of a pant. And it is, uh, it's a shallower breath. And consequently, it stimulates the body-mind. And that causes the sympathetic nervous system to get activated. And that's the go-go-go part. So uh, the learning to, uh, you know, to breathe, fire breathing, you know, is a way of, of stoking up the, uh, the, the, the system, getting you ready to, to, to go into battle. Um, that that you're, you're stimulating the part of your nervous system which can and often does activate the fight, flight, or freeze response in the, in the body mind. So that's that shallow breathing. And it's the default setting for, I would say, most adults is they breathe very shallowly. They, and the reason for that is you breathe in. And what's happening whenever you inhale is your diaphragm contracts and presses down on your internal organs. When it meets resistance there, then there is a pre-conscious trigger that says, okay, I'm going to activate the intercostal muscles and contract those. And those are the chest muscles, which then cause the, the chest to expand and to create a vacuum for the, uh, for the breath. And that's, that's kind of the way most of us operate when we are not thinking about it, when we're not mindful about our breath. And so it does lead to a, a hyped up state which can lead to anxiety. It can lead to, you know, hypervigilance um, or a restlessness, a, uh, you know, particularly when you're trying to get to sleep at night and you're, you know, you're doing that, it's, it keeps you jacked up. And the, um, that sympathetic nervous system response causes everything to work a little bit faster to, to get you going and then that causes your mind to race and to cause you to perseverate to think about things long after the stimulus is gone and so you go into that that kind of loop um so the other way of going about it is whenever you breathe so you know we we call it breathing diaphragmatically but all breathing is kind of diaphragmatic in a sense but what you're doing is you're consciously overriding that impulse to activate the intercostal muscles. And you're saying, okay, guys, don't immediately contract your chest and the, the intercostal muscles and cause the chest expand. We're gonna keep on compressing downward with the diaphragm past the point where it may, have even, may even be comfortable at first. If your diaphragm is tight and rigid, which stress will do that, it'll cause your, your you kind of tense up your diaphragm and uh, a lot of times too, um, uh, to hold an emotion. We, you know, we hold our breath to, uh, to hold an emotion. So when that happens, if that's done chronically, then the, diaph the diaphragm can get very, very stiff. And so it won't want to really do that without a lot of coaxing. And it may require, you know, some some actual body work in order to get your, to release your diaphragm. But the, uh, uh, I'm speaking now in, in the direction we want to head, which is to be able to release the diaphragm enough and be able to continue past that point where the trigger says, hey, you gotta breathe, you gotta expand your chest now. So you're keeping the chest relaxed and you're allowing the breath to push down, the, the diaphragm to push down, which, there are two ways that you can go with this. One is called Buddhist breathing. That's one name for it. And that is when, as you breathe in, then your belly expands. That's, uh, that's a, a, a more typical type of diaphragmatic breathing. As you inhale, the belly expands. As you exhale, it contracts. Okay. And all the while your chest is relaxed. You're saying, okay, just uh, now you're breathing in and and that's and that's and that's good. And that what that does is it it expands your um, 
your capacity so that you can get two to three times as much air per breath than you do with thoracic breathing. And this has the effect of calming down your nervous system, going putting you in the parasympathetic more, which is what you need in order to go to sleep. You need to go into that parasympathetic uh, nervous system state in order to go to sleep. And that's the rest and digest mode. So we have, we, if the sympathetic is the fight, flight, or freeze mode, and this is simplistic, but it's, you know, that's the, uh, you know, one way of thinking of it. The rest and digest mode is the parasympathetic. And we ideally want to be able to toggle easily between the two. And that's what we, what we seek in our Tai Chi practice is to be able to do that while we are actively moving. So we breathe in air and so So that's Buddhist breathing, belly expands. Taoist breathing, this is a, again, sort of a, a simplistic way of talking about it, but it's one label for it, is where you, instead of the belly expanding as you breathe, you're still pushing down the diaphragm, but your, your belly does not expand. So what happens now is you're pushing even more down, down into the internal organs, which massages the internal organs and causes more better circulation in there. But it also brings the breath down to, you know, what's called the, in some Tao circles called the real Dantian, which is at the center of the body. So oftentimes they, people talk about the Dantian as being the uh, Chi Hai, which is the, uh, uh, the six point on the, the conception vessel, uh, which is you know, just a little bit below your navel. The, what the Taoists are calling the real Dantian is actually a, a, a ball that is at the center and it's not, not, instead of on the surface here, it's at the center of the body. You know, it's, it's below the navel, above the, uh, the pubic area, and it's, it's, it's down there. And that's, so that, that's kind of your target zone for the breath. And actually, what I, I would go a step further than that is that you would like to, you want to breathe all the way down. So you're feeling pressure on the hui yin, which is at the perineum. And that's the first point on the conception vessel. And that's the most yin point in, in the whole system there. And so it's where the, the meeting point of the conception vessel and the governing vessel, which are the part of the great central channel. That's, that's the, the, uh, the, the two main meridians, channels, they're not even meridians, they're channels, which feed all the other, which do feed the 12 meridians. So you breathe down to the, the Hui Yin. So, and you can help this by just kind of lifting with on your perineum, just, just not tight, but just kind of a gentle lift on it, like a, a, a soft Kegel exercise. And when you do that, you're connecting the, the conception vessel and the governing vessel, the Renma and the Duba. And you, uh, you're making that connection, which then, starts to bring that whole system, the, the governing vessel and the conception vessel. The conception vessel runs up the front, the governing vessel up the back. You bring that into one system and then it fills up, becomes a reservoir, it fills up with chi and then it also fills up into the rest of the, uh, the meridians. So, I'm getting a little ahead of myself there because that's where we're addressing with the with the microcosmic orbit. With the the first part there is just hui yun breathing, or another way of calling it is uh, they call it the embryonic breathing, and that is is one one uh, way of thinking of it is that that's the way we breathe when we're embryos, as we just breathe with the whole body and breathe down here, and uh, another explanation for it is that we become these spiritual embryos when we breathe that way, because then once we contact the real Dantian, then we start to become, begin the journey of actually opening up the big chi and creating more of a, um, 
uh, a spiritual connection. So um, let's just do a, a little bit of that. We can do that sitting. And let's just take it a step at a time here. First is to just breathe thoracically. So that as you, as you inhale, as soon as you feel that impulse there, you, you feel the, the chest expand and contract. And, and just do that for a minute. Just breathe thoracically. Yeah, just notice that as your diaphragm contracts, you, know, you bump up against resistance and then you immediately go to the, to go to the chest. And uh, now let's do the Buddhist breathing where you're going to allow the belly to expand as you inhale. And release as you exhale. And do that for a minute. Good. Notice how that calmed everything down. Just focusing on that calmed everything down. Now let's take it a step further. This is um, um, Taoist breathing, which is also called reverse breathing sometimes. And that is where you are, as you inhale, you relax the chest but you also relax the abdomen so that the abdominal muscles are not contracting. There, you, your abdomen is still, your, if you put your hand on it, it's not rising and falling. And allow the breath to go down and target your perineum, your, your hui yin. You know, the perineum is the area between the genitals and the, and the anus. And you target that and you allowing the breath to go all the way down into that real Dantian. And do that for a minute. And you can lift lightly on the perineum as you inhale. I also help find it useful to coordinate this with pointing and reaching with the index fingers. Good. So that's, that's your Taoist or reverse breathing.